All right, welcome back to the TCI headquarters. We get to do our preview and prediction of the Tigers headed back up to Pittsburgh. Last trip what didn't go so well. Mm -hmm. This trip, I think we might see a better better result, but we'll find out here in a minute when everybody bets their mortgage on the, the outcome of the house. We was like, what? Uh, what? <laughs> <laughs> so, all right, Will, we'll start with you. Keys, <laughs> keys to the game. What you what you looking at? Uh, keys to the game. All right, well, I think it's pretty simple to me. Um, you got to stop that. I'm going to look at Clemson's offense against their defense. And it comes to stopping, um, I think it's number nine, Kyle Lewis. Is my right on that? Or is it zero? Um, it's, it's, it's nine. nine. It's nine. nine. You can't tell, Will. If, nine, you, if nine, you can't tell, he's cheating. Nine is everywhere. <laughs> I mean, literally, he's everywhere. Like, they, they use him a lot like Clemson used Isaiah Simmons back in the day. And uh, But he's disruptive. He gets the right up, uh, lines up right in front of the center, like right on top of the center. And he just goes and creates havoc. Pretty much like we were saying when they Clemson needs to do more Sammy Brown. Mm -hmm. And he intercepts passes. He gets sacks. He fumbles. He deflects passes and catches it and runs them for touchdowns. He does everything. He is their guy. So the goal is very simple. You got to stop him. <laughs> Did Virginia stop him? Uh, Virginia slowed him down. Okay. He was very. He's still disruptive against Virginia. But, yeah, I think you've got to look at what Virginia did to, to keep him where he just wasn't as disruptive as he has been in weeks past. Uh, I think uh, SMU did a good job against him, too. Uh, and so I think Clemson's got some tape where they find some ways to be successful. That has to be the game plan for the offense. And then one more thing, you got to get the ball downfield. they got T.J. Moore, catch the long ball without it having to be you wide open. You got to catch the long ball, TJ Moore. Emails need, to Will Vanderbilt. They need you to catch the long ball in this game because Clemson's got it. They're going to get opportunities for explosive plays. They're going to be downfield. They're going to be open. He's got to make those catches. All right, I got a comment for you. You said they they got some stuff on tape now. They don't need stuff on tape this week. Hey Tony, this is Dabo. <laughs> what you got? Uh, all right, JP, what's your keys? Yeah, he took mine. Mine was going to be well, part of mine anyways. Mm -hmm. You know. The offense needs to get off to a better start. You can't go scoreless for a half or, or do nothing for a half. And, and Wait, you're not supposed to go scoreless? And, and keep expecting <laughs> to, you know, win football games. You got to you got to get off to a better start, and that includes making some plays down the field. Those receivers have to be better. Six drops last week. Six. Can't have that. Got to catch the ball, and, and these guys are going to have to win some one-on-one -on -one matchups because they're going to have plenty of opportunities in man coverage, and they're going to have to – do a much better job against it than they did against Louisville when they had those opportunities. Right, and who had the most drop passes last week? T.J. Moore. <laughs> T.J., I love you, buddy. He, I'm all I, – I got no problem we, with we you. We all love T.J., just keep but going. he needs to catch the ball. He had two. Wesco had one. Antonio had one. Moffa had one. And Brennan still had one. Yeah, yeah. And so, it was all spread out. It was all spread out. And then, interesting, Davo said on Tuesday that – Antonio had one. Might have been touchdown. That's right, yeah. T.J. Moore, one of his would have been a touchdown. T.J.'s would have been a touchdown so. also. Um, and Dabo said, you know, on Tuesday, he thought this was the worst game. That was the worst game, um, you know, Kate had played all year from a quarterback standpoint. He said from a leadership standpoint, it was a great, his best game. But from a quarterback standpoint of just doing what you need to do as a quarterback. So, so you had a bad quarterback performance and you had bad wide receiver performances and you still won the game 24 to 14. That's the good news. You know, but – they can't do that this week because this defense lives for chaos with the quarterbacks and wide receivers not executing. Well, and the good news is for Cade and for the team, the environment you're playing in, I know it's NFL Stadium, yada, yada, yada. The environment is not going to be as difficult as what they no, played in no, at Virginia Tech. No, there will uh, be a lot of Clemson. Like I said before, I think a lot of Clemson people are going to be there. I know a lot of Clemson Steeler fans are coming to do both. Uh, so there will be a good contingency of Clemson fans uh, more than there was last time because it's such a good trip that a lot of Clemson fans wanted to hear what it was like, and so you're going to hear you're going to see a lot more Clemson fans than you did the first time Clemson was there. Going up to see the Tigers, not the Steelers. Come on, we no, are. not the Steelers, but the All trip right. in itself. Uh, Pittsburgh's a, it's a nice town. It's a good town. It's a good place to go visit. They'll have a good time. Is what I mean. It says Steeler will. I mean. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna go the other side of the ball. I just want a rinse and repeat. Uh, and I, I know the offense, their challenge is different of what we saw from defense. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think any of us thought the defense was basically going to push a shutout. I know they scored late, but 
defensive yeah. performance was outstanding. They played for four quarters, um, and they played in an environment, again, that was much tougher than what they're going to face. So I just want to see Rents repeat of the defensive performance. You know, we've got some guys, like we talked about, Hampton gaining confidence, which is going to – we should see better play coming from him. Lawson played well. We should see even better play coming from him and Hoffler and some of these guys that are having to uh, fill in for some of the – Injured players, Green had a really good game. His confidence level has got to be going up. So I just want to def- see the defense play as well as they did last week. If they do, Clemson will be in really good shape. Yeah, and they really need a key on uh, number zero, the running back, Desmond Reed. That kid is one of the better players in the ACC. Um, he's an explosive guy. He can. So this is another situation like Louisville where they got a guy who can really, you know, if you can't, they, they run the zone stretch, same thing. They're going to see it again. And they, he, he gets lost in the wash. And, it, you know, and when he does, he's he gone. Well, and that and, offense and wasn't quite the same, though, through. with that uh, with their starting quarterback out. Uh, right. We'll watch true. that Virginia but game. But they do do a lot of screens with him, and they get him involved in the passing game a lot. And so he's a little more challenging because of how they use him in the passing game. So you got to stay home sometimes. Clemson did a great job last week with the screen game. Took that away from Virginia Tech. They're going to have to do the same in this game. I think he's top five, top ten in all-purpose yards in the country, not the ACC in the country. So, it's definitely definitely one of the keys is going to be challenged to keep him contained. Well, and let's talk about the quarterback. Yeah. Obviously, we don't know who's going to be the starter for Pitt, but we know the – Holstein's listed as a starter right now. We know the starter went out last week. But that's in the depth chart. And he went out the week before. So, he's had head injuries two weeks in a row. And, you know, part of that's on uh, I'd on be Arduzzi. a little surprised if he plays, but I don't. I have no idea. Narduzzi shouldn't have him playing against Syracuse in that fourth quarter. And he had him in there, and he, that's when he got the first concussion. And I'm like, what are you doing? Then he, like you said, got it again. So, yeah. So, Pitt's coming off back-to-back losses. They were sitting there undefeated. Seven What were they, like number 20 in the country or something? 18. And 18, and now they're loss-loss. So, we'll see what they're – Makeup is mentally when the, the Tigers come to town. All right, Will, let you go first on your prediction. Ooh, yeah, I don't, you know. Ooh. I know the Tigers are a ten and a half point favorite. Um, I think the over and under is the same. I think the over and under is the same as it was last week, right around fifty something. Um, you know, I could see it kind of being a game like last week because I think Pitt's got a pretty good defense, uh, one of the best rushing defenses in the country. Um, so they're going to really limit Phil Moffa. It's going to come down to Cade and the wide receivers. They got to they got to execute and perform. Um, so I don't know what the defense. I, I, I you know I wish I could say the defense. I mean they they they're Jekyll and Hyde right now. So I, I just don't know what's going what defense is going to show up. The defense last week showed up. Then things are going to be good for Clemson. Um, but if the defense against Louisville shows up, then they could be in trouble. Uh, I don't care who the quarterback is. So. Um, and also, how, how tall is the field going to be, the grass going to be? Because I thought about this. Pittsburgh may, Pittsburgh may end up like letting made. the grass grow high, too, just slow down Lamar Jackson. So it might be both – must be real high grass to be in the weeds there. You know, so, um, you know, so I'm going to go ahead. I think it's going to be kind of a low-scoring game. I'm going to go similar to last week. I'm going to say um, Clemson 24, Pittsburgh 14. I'm going to go exact same score as last week's game was. All right, JP, we got the grass stuff we expected. What you got? <laughs> Mine is going to be different from last week because I paid them to lose. <laughs> <laughs> only, only negative guy. Here. <laughs> but well, why did you do it, JP? Because I watched that defense play the week before yeah. that. No, no, but why did you pick him? Oh, lose? yeah, reverse psychology. <laughs> <laughs> it worked. It worked. So you daggum better not pick him to win this week. <laughs> I think they're going to win this week. Um, that that Pittsburgh team is is really – and it's not just the quarterback. How many guys that we see leave injured during that yeah, Virginia game? that's true. And I lost count. Yep. I think one of them was one of their top pass catchers too. Yeah, a couple of offensive linemen got hurt. They, they, they are beat up. Um, so, you can thank Tony Elliott for that too. You know, you beat them up the week before Clips has got to play them. I do see it being kind of a low-scoring affair though because I, I, that defense, they're, they're pretty good on that side of the ball. I think they're going to give Clemson's receivers some issues, but I do think they're going to win enough matchups to go up there and win. I got 27-17. There we go. 27-17. You guys are in the same neighborhood. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, gosh, I was obviously – I picked a win last week, but nothing like what we saw. Um, 
I'm like you, JP. I'm just – and, you know, I haven't watched Pitt a ton this year, but we watched pretty much the entire Virginia game and uh, got to watch a, a good bit of that and just feel like they're – they're not the team everybody thought they were three weeks ago. I agree with they that. could just uh, as of be, course Clemson wasn't the team everybody thought they were three weeks ago either. That's true. Pitt could just as easily be five and four right now as they are seven and two. Correct. That's the difference between the two teams. Where Clemson's dominated the games they've won, Pittsburgh Minnesota has not in their games. Well, and if Dabo can take the halftime speech he gave last week and just do that before the game, we in good shape. Um, I think the defense is going to play well. I think they're, you know, some of these young bucks are they're starting to come along, and you know, obviously Sammy Brown is amazing. Um, I think Cade going on the road and playing like that was big for him last week. The toughest uh, environment he's played in, yeah, uh, no doubt. That, that place was it was it was a that raucous a, environment. That is one of the best environments like you see in college football. It really is, and. It's louder than it's louder than Tallahassee. It's louder than Texas A and M. You know, it's um, it's one of the ones I. Enjoy it's definitely to. the second best in the ACC. Oh, without, without, without a doubt. Down. And it's down. like you said, it competes with some of the other environments in the SEC and, and other does. places mm-hmm. when they're playing well. And you know, when they're playing a team like Clemson, they they pack the place out. And yep. They, they were obviously leading at the. Half time, so well, that they, they were into happen? the game. How loud was that place that block one happened? I mean, it was unbelievably deafening. <laughs> you know, block field goal. I mean, they just took for a yeah, touchdown. That, that it was, was deafening. That was my first time, and I'd been looking forward to it for a long time, and it did not disappoint. That's right. Yes, that's that's right. right. And first time to pit this week, yep. right? First All time right. to pit. So, JP is going to see a Clemson victory this week. I'm going to go with Clemson 35. Pit 21. And for the record, because they're going to be handing them out I think before the game, those are not terrible towels that Pitt fans will have, okay? Pitt does not use terrible towels in the game, so just throwing that out there. Anyway. Because so you, you're going to say it. You always they're gonna be. Are they going to be yellow? They'll be yellow, yes. Okay. But they won't be pit. They but won't they'll be, be, they they'll won't be, be terrible towels. They'll be smaller. They'll be tiny hankies okay. like South Carolina And has. you know what? Will will bring his with him. When he goes to the game Sunday, I will. I'll He'll have his my shoulder his terrible Sunday. towel. Right. So that's just a terrible visual altogether. So, <laughs> um, <laughs> but, <laughs> my Terry Bradshaw J- jersey. JP on. and I'll be driving back uh, Sunday. Will will be watching the Steelers lose to the Ravens. So we're going to be in a lot better wow. mood than wow. than this guy. <laughs> we're going to beat the Ravens. Uh, th- First place, baby. This guy comes back Monday. I believe, Eighty-two right? next week. You come back Monday. Come back right? Monday. Okay. Yeah, be coming back Monday. So. But obviously, we're going to have it all covered. Bart will be up there with us as well. So uh, we'll have everything covered up there from the Steel City. And um, looking forward to hopefully another big Clemson win. Hopefully, Tigers finish 7-1 in the conference, which will be most seasons a guarantee to the ACC championship. Not this season, unfortunately. But we've got everything covered. Stay tuned to TCI for the most complete coverage of Clemson football and recruiting.